giving all kinds of classy, grown and sexy in the best way possible. What's up Katie Raz and welcome back to the channel. I have just booked myself a cute little holiday to the south of France. So the next few videos are going to be dedicated to projects that I know I'm going to be taking with me on holiday. This range from beautiful skirts, swimsuits, interesting tops, and possibly an accessory in the mix somewhere in there. So make sure to stay tuned for this whole video and future videos in the month of July and August to see what we create. Amazing news guys, this skirt pattern is available on the Kim Dave shop as a downloadable PDF. This you can shop from anywhere in the world and you just need a home printer, A4 paper to have your own patterns at home. This is available in a UK size 6 to 20. So I'm going to leave a link down below for anyone who wants to grab one for themselves. <music> Now the skirt design itself is a very elegant one. I love the fact that it skims over the body in a very like elegant and silky and cool way. Now the draping is on one side alone and there is a slit. You can make the slit as high as you would like it to be but basically the, the slit starts underneath of the gathering on one side of the skirt the fabric i'm using is this t-shirt jersey this is quite lightweight because i plan to actually cut two layers of this skirt you can cut yours as one layer if your fabric is thick you also need some elastic to put in your waistband and matching threads to go with your fabric now that i have my materials out of the way i'm going to actually show you guys how to make the sewing patterns if you want to make yours yourself i have a piece of paper here that i've folded in half and I'm drawing a short horizontal line on the top end of the paper. The edge at the bottom is folded. So from that horizontal line that I've drawn, I'm going to mark the vertical distance from my waist to my hip minus 10 inches. And then I'm going to mark my desired skirt length. I want mine to be long and maxi. So I went for 37 inches. I'm just going in here to square those points across. So this one here will become my hip line and then the bottom one will become the hemline of the skirt along the waistline i'm going in to mark a quarter of my waist measurement minus half an inch negative ease and then i'm going to go to my hip line and mark a quarter of my hip measurement minus half an inch negative ease that is because the fabric has stretched so i wanted to just stretch a little bit across my waist and my hips that i'm connecting together to create the side seam of the skirt and i'm going to draw it as a straight line from the hip all the way to the hemline so it's a straight line from your hip to the hem whereas it kind of curves out from the waist to the hip now that i have this part of the pattern done i'm going to flip it to the other side and basically mirror those lines on the other side of the paper because i want to have a full front piece that is going to help me create the back and the other parts of this skirt design don't forget to transfer the hip line and any other notch points that you need once i have that out of the way i'm going to open my pattern like this and I'm going to mark about four inches away from this side like so. I want my gathering to sort of sit halfway, like three quarter way on one side of my leg. I don't want it in the middle. And then I'm just squaring that line all the way from the top down to the hemline because I'm going to be slashing that later on in this video. Once I have that line drawn in place, before I slash it, I actually want to create a second copy because the way this skirt pattern works is you're actually going to have just one piece of pattern that you would cut onto your fabric and it's ready to stitch. But before we do all the cutting and the slashing and the spreading, I went ahead to create a second copy because that's going to act as my back skirt. The shape is the same on the front and on the back. And I'm going to grab that second copy I did and I'm going to be joining it along the side on this edge like so. This I've just trimmed down so the lines actually match and I'm joining them together with some cello tape along the side seam and along the sort of like hip area. We are going to get rid of, you know that curve that happens when you go from the waist to the hip? We're going to get rid of that later on in the video but for now, I'm just connecting these two pattern pieces together. With my paper scissors, I'm just trimming off the bottom excess paper. This I'm going to save and use later on when I'm slashing and spreading the top half of my skirt. But once I have that trimmed off, I'm going to open up my pattern like so. 
and make some more changes to this. And I'm going to come to that front line, you know the one we drew earlier on, and that I'm going to divide like so. And then I'm going to take that piece of pattern, the one on the top of the screen, and then I'm going to attach that to the side of the bottom edge of this pattern piece like so. So in essence, we're just moving specific parts of the skirt around. So I have just one pattern piece because I don't want to have a seam in the skirt except the one where the gathering is on the front. Now I'm just joining these two pattern pieces like so with some cello tape. I'm going to join up the side seam and then this curved edge that connects the waist to the hip. So I have a full pattern piece that is essentially like a whole skirt. It's just that where the seams sit are slightly different. So the difference on the top edge of the side seam, I'm going to move towards the edge of the pattern that I'm going to measure and then mark it inwards like so, and then draw in a new hip curve or hip dip that goes from the waistline down to the hip line. That way I'm getting rid of that measurement there. I'm shifting it to the side seam. So it actually, the skirt sits correctly on the body. And this I'm going to do for the left side and for the right side. So the edges now become the new side seam of this skirt pattern. Even though the side seam is like on the front, I just kind of want every part of the pattern to sit correctly on the body the way that it should. Don't forget to trim off any excess paper and connect the waistline so you have one correct horizontal waistline for the skirt pattern. <music> On the top half of the skirt, I'm going to be slashing and spreading on the right side and my panels are going to be 1.5 inches wide. You can make as many panels or as few panels as you like. I just wanted a few amount of panels so I could really add a lot of volume to this particular side of the skirt. I wanted the gathers to be obvious. Once I had those points marked, I'm just drawing in a horizontal line that cuts from one side of the skirt to the other. So I'm actually able to slash along these lines with my paper scissors. The plan is to slash from the right side to the left because I want to add the volume on the right side of the pattern but still have the left side somewhat straight or the same measurement so when I gather in the right side it fits back into the left side of the pattern. The plan is to add volume, drapey and just that beautiful detail on that side of the skirt. Now my paper is just I'm just going in here to slash like so, slashing as close as possible to the edge of the pattern. You can even separate the panels if you want, just I like to keep my panels connected so the, the pieces don't just start flying around all over the room. I have gone ahead to add a piece of paper underneath my pattern like so. And I'm going to be spreading the pattern upward. So the fat bottom panel is going to stay straight and then I'm spreading by three inches upward. So it's kind of like lifting that side of the skirt or that side of the waistline. I found that when I was doing this, I had to go to the edge where the slash ended and just cut the pattern open a little bit more. So it actually spreads a lot easier. I didn't want to have any weird gathers or weird folds happening but once I had spread all of my patterns I'm going in here to draw in a curved side seam that connects everything together. The plan is to connect the waistline down to the edge of the point where we started slashing and spreading so we have one full seam that we can now connect to the other side of the skirt. <music> I'm going in here to add a one centimeter seam allowance to the waistline and then I'm cutting off any excess paper that I don't need. You can decide to leave your pattern like this and then add your seam allowance when you're cutting your fabric or you can add your seam allowance to your pattern. So when you're cutting onto your fabric, you don't have to think about the fact that you need to add seam allowance, whichever way you prefer to work, that's absolutely fine. But off the camera, I actually created a waistband pattern. This is essentially just the same, like the length of the waistband is your waist measurement and then the width is 2.5 inches because I got a one inch elastic band. So I want a waistband that wraps around the elastic and sits into the waistline of the skirt. So those are the two pattern pieces that I've created for this skirt design. This I'm going to cut onto fabric and then stitch together to create the gorgeous and elegant style that this skirt is. 
so i've gone in to pin my pattern onto fabric and on the edges i didn't have any seam allowance on my pattern so i just marked this straight onto fabric i'm working with a one centimeter seam allowance there was seam allowance on my waistline so that i'm cutting in like so and the hemline you can add seam allowance if you want or you can just leave it the way it is it's up to you now that i have all of my skirt pieces cut out i cut two pieces for the main body of the skirt and then i cut just one piece for the waistband because that i'm going to fold against itself and then stitch it to the waistline the first thing i'm going to do in terms of sewing is i'm going to gather up all of the, you know the slashing and spreading that we did this is the point where we gather everything back to its original form because we want to connect it to the other side that is straight so to do this i stitched with the longest stitch in my machine and i just pull the thread until i got everything in and then i'm going to be sewing it from the waistline down to the bottom of my slash and spread area if it helps i would say cut notches at the point where you want your gathers to stop if you don't also want a slit you can just stitch this entire thing close so you just have a skirt that has the gathering detail on the hip and then you have a straight seam down to the bottom but i know i want a slit on the front of my skirt so i repeated the same thing on the inner layer or the lining depends on if you're using the same fabric or if you have a thinner fabric for your lining and then i'm going to put both pieces together with right sides facing one another and i'm going to pin it in such a way that i'm able to sew around that slit opening this is the beauty about lining things because once you can go in and stitch things away on the inside turn it inside out give it a nice press they look so much cleaner so i'm just going ahead to sew across this edge of my slit like so leaving my needle in and lifting the footer i'm going to sew around the slit and along the hemline as well because i want the hemline of my skirt to be beautifully finished this i have turned inside out and giving a press and this is what the skirt is looking like i i'm so happy i decided to line this skirt because i just know that the fact that the slit is very visible on the front if i had just like folded that and stitched that in i think it won't be it wouldn't have turned out as nice as it looks right now it is time to join the waistband now i'm going to put right sides together because the plan is to sew up this open end this i'm going to be stitching with my overlocker because i want it to be able to stretch nicely around my waist then i'm going to fold it against itself like so matching edges together and this i'm going to be attaching to the waistline of the skirt i'm going to pin it in place so all i have to do is take this to my overlocker and then stitch them together the reason why overlock is because when you stitch stretch fabrics you need the fabric to be able to stretch with the seam and vice versa this i'm going to be stitching up and leaving a small opening for the elastic band later on and i'm really going to be stitching it across using my overlocker and once i reach the edge where i want to leave my opening i'm just going to take this out so i have that open for my elastic now i'm going to grab my elastic band the elastic itself is one inch wide and the length is the same as my waistline minus 1.5 inches so there's a little bit of stretch in there and it gathers in the waistband just a little so i'm going to pass this into the open waistline and i'm going to join the edges together this you should join with a zigzag stitch to prevent it from snagging in the future but here i'm just going in with a normal straight stitch but i'm doing it several times so at least it's secure inside the waistband of the skirt before going back in to close the opening that i left earlier on so i'm able to add the elastic into the waistband of the skirt with that done i gave my skirt a press and this is what it looks like all done honestly this skirt just makes me feel like a goddess i think that's the best way to describe how i feel in this skirt i know it's something that will pair well with a shirt or a crop top or a bodysuit or even over my swimsuit if i'm going to the beach or going to the pool and i don't want to have my bum out i know this is a skirt that i can just pull over my swimsuit when i am on holiday i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video i had an amazing time creating this skirt i'm going to leave links to the pdf pattern materials and any other information that i think you'll find useful down below give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it don't forget to tag me on social media at kim dave designs if you do recreate this and until next time have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye